notes pulled up here. Welcome to the service today. I'm Pastor Mike. This is Robin. We're glad you could be with us. We're here live at the church in the cabin or church on the creek or whatever we call it this week. I'm not sure. <laughs> We're Abundant Love Church. We're in Jacksonville, Florida at 2548 Blackshire Road. And I want to take just a moment here to thank everyone that has supported this ministry and continues to support it. We appreciate your prayers and we also appreciate your finances. We could not do what we're doing except that uh, people support us financially and and uh, if you have have uh, thought about that we ask you to pray about it and be a part of what God's doing I believe the Lord will bless your giving amen uh, that having been said we've been teaching on the subject of the works of Jesus and we're going to pick up with that today uh, our primary text is found over in John 14 John chapter 14 if you'll look over there with me just a moment, I, I kind of got ahead of myself on my notes here. Uh, but in John 14, 12, Jesus was speaking, and he made the observation. He, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these, because I go unto my Father. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love this. And... Uh, Verse 13, he continued, he made this statement as well. He said, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name. You know, we, we've talked at length before, and I probably will continue to do so because this is so foreign to what many of us were taught in church. Uh, many of us, hold, hold your place in John 14 and 13, and let's go over to Second Peter. I'm going to open up my... my computer bible here and see if it'll cooperate with me today i don't i have the pro uh, <laughs> have an idea the problem isn't the bible so much as it's the operator yeah. <laughs> but uh <laughs> anyway if you'll turn over there second peter chapter one i want you to notice something I, I don't know about you but so much of what was emphasized to me about the subject of prayer when i was a child growing up was that we use prayers as a means of petitioning the Father or placing our needs or our desires, our wants before Him. And even at that, it was really somewhat of an anemic teaching because uh, the church I went to, they tell you that, that you ought to pray. It was your responsibility to pray. But if you ever prayed and got an answer and told anybody about it, they looked at you like you were crazy because they never had. Mm -hmm. I, I think I shared already a testimony. I had my mom went in and talked to the pastor that was there. This was after Bill Brooks had left. He'd come back to Jacksonville at that point. And this, this was down in Braden, in Florida. Uh, the pastor that had come in and, and followed after Bill was, I'm not sure the guy was even born again, honestly. I don't know. I'm not going to say he wasn't. But I really question it on the basis of some lack of fruit in his life that I saw. My mom actually uh, went in and was sharing a testimony of something tremendous the Lord had done in her life. And, and uh, he, he kind of looked down his nose at her, and I thought, oh, this isn't good. Uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you just kind of pick up on that religious air on some people, don't you? Yeah. You can't help it. And, and it's that fruit. It's hard to ignore fruit. Right. You know, uh, well, anyway... Um, so he got up in the pulpit next thing you know he's talking about these people that think they can convince God to do anything or or, or he used the image somehow of forcing God's arm behind his back and, and making him do our bidding and, and that is not at all what my mom had told him or what my mom had done my mom simply had, had uh, prayed about something and she saw the Lord had responded and answered it and she was bragging on Jesus she wasn't bragging right. on herself Right. Well, anyway, uh, that's that was the kind of atmosphere I grew up in as a child in church was primarily that prayer was about asking God for things or praying for other people and asking for things for other people, but you really didn't expect anything to happen. Mm -hmm. And so when we read verses like we just read over there from uh, John 14, when when you start reading those verses, hold your place, Second Peter. There, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be right back to you. I'm gonna go back to John. Uh, 14 over there. He said uh, again in verse 12, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall I do, because I go unto my Father. And in verse 13, we began reading, it says, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Mm. That word ask is the, the Greek word aiteo. A-I-T-E-E-O, I believe is how it's spelled. It's a Greek word. I don't know Greek. I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn last night, but I do have a Vines dictionary. I've got a Strong's Concordance. <laughs> 
And, and one day I was praying a little bit and studying, and I was impressed to the Lord to look at the root word to that word Iteo. And in the root word, it, it, it tells you uh, that it's to make a demand for something that is due. There's another word that's compared to it, and it says not as uh, this word Iteo, which strictly means a demand for something that is due. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when it says ask, it's not, it doesn't mean for us to ask God for something or ask God to do something. Now I had to turn over to Peter. I want you to look at this just a moment. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Look if you would. I'm, I'm just going to start reading the first verse. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained, and notice that, have obtained, like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now Peter is comparing your faith to his. And I know he had his down moments, but he also walked on water. Well, yeah, but he sank. Yeah, but have you ever walked on water? You know? Uh, absolutely. And, and so, you know, he, he really had his moments in a very good way. And uh, he goes on to say this. He said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now that word knowledge speaks of of. of that which we acquire through intimacy with our Father. Mm-hmm. It's talking about relationship. This this isn't some kind of a head trip. In fact, there are times that your head will be spinning, but in your heart you know that God has spoken to you or, or is leading you a certain way. And it's in line with His Word. Amen? Yeah. I want to be real careful there. Well, in verse 3, it goes on to say, According as His divine power hath. Notice the tense of that word. What does it mean when He uses that word hath? He's talking about an action that's already transpired, something that's already done. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us a few things that we really couldn't use. (laughs) That's the way most people tend to read that, I think. Amen. But that isn't what it says, is it? According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. How many things? All. All things. Amen. All things. What, What kind of things? that pertain unto life and godliness. In other words, anything you need to please God, anything you need to serve God, anything you need, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so it's telling us that God has already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And uh, it's uh, where do we get it from? Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory. Mm-hmm. In other words, as we continue to walk with him and fellowship with him, and he leads us into abundance and blessing amen makes us lie down in green pastures not old scalded dry parched desert earth right Right? and and so so uh, let me ask you this if he's already given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness what is there to ask him for We're told that he's blessed us with all spiritual <laughs> blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus already. Right. We've received an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Isn't the issue more one of learning to receive what God's already provided than trying to convince God to do ever what he declares has already been done? Yes. Sir. yes. And, and that's really what Jesus was getting at to a certain degree. And, and I, I believe that's the emphasis of that word, I tell you. Uh, over in James, what is it, James chapter 2, he said that you have not because you ask not, or is that chapter 4? Chapter 4? Yeah, okay, I'm asking our resident concordance, Ralph, over there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a little, I, I, I need to quit saying I'm a little jumbled on things, but I've been a little bit jumbled. I'm, I'm, what was that buddy used to say on night court? John Aston played that part. He, he, he said, I, I was in a straight jacket or something. He'd been in a mental institute. He said, but I'm doing much better now. I kind of feel that way sometimes. Well, anyway, uh, if he's already given us all these things, then the key issue isn't persuading God to give us something else. The key issue is learning to take advantage of what he says is already ours. And that's what that word I tell you. That's the emphasis upon it. Now, going back on over there, if you would, to uh, John 14. Let's pick back up over there. John 14. He said in verse 13, Whatsoever ye shall demand as being due in my name. What does that mean to demand as being due? It means that you acknowledge the faithfulness of God to his word and him having said or declared that he has provided whatever that is his word declares and that you receive it by faith. That's how you put a demand on God. 
your faith draws him. Remember Jesus when, when Jairus came and sought him out and said, my daughter is near death. Uh, master come and, and lay your hand on her pray for her that she'll be healed yeah. and, and Jesus was he, I mean he I, I believe Jesus was focused <laughs> I really do uh, and he was he set out to, to return to Jairus' household with him and, and right in the middle of their journey back this woman comes out of nowhere and touches the hem of the garment because she said to herself if I can just touch the hem of his garment right. I'll be made whole she'd been been sick for what 12 years had been hemorrhaging had a, a flow of blood was mm -hmm. was and, and and think about it this way as far as Jewish law and custom she was unclean she wasn't even supposed to be among the general population right. Right. and yet here she was and, and and instead of stopping to scold her for violating the law mm -hmm. Jesus was amazed and he stopped right dead in his tracks there's something about faith that will get God's attention in the middle of all else that's going on Amen. and, and here she here she was she touched the hem of his garment and, and Jesus stopped and he said who touched me the disciples thought he was you know he's talking to fig trees now he's asking who's touched him and, and I can't tell you who hasn't touched him in this crowd right, right. And, and and so but they weren't all touching him in faith. No, they weren't. <laughs> see, her her touch was. See, there's a lot of people praying today. Yes, sir. And they're wondering where's God? Is he in Bermuda? Because mm. he sure sure doesn't seem to be where they're at. Mm. It's it's not just touching him physically that does it. You know, people say, well, if God was just here, if he would just appear to me, wouldn't make any difference if you're not in faith. Mm. And in that situation, that woman was in. Her touch was unique. <laughs> And if you read the account of that, Jesus said, I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Wow. That word virtue is dunamis, and it's talking about the, the power Dynamic. that is manifest through the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. How, how God anointed Jesus in Nazareth, Acts 10 through 8, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing. It was that same power that enabled Jesus to minister healing to the multitudes. And, and, and to the the individuals, to the lepers, yeah. and, and her touch. Here he was. He was he was about the father's business. He was going to Jairus's house to minister to his daughter, and this woman's touch had such an impact upon him, it it absolutely arrested him and stopped him. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, can you imagine what Jairus was thinking, Master? We got to hurry. We yeah. got to hurry. My daughter. And Jesus told him, "Be not afraid; only believe, and your daughter will be well." Well, and and it turned out right, didn't it? Because yes, you can yes. you can trust God, you can take God at His word, Amen. and and, uh, and Jesus was the living word in that situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, He said, "Whatever you demand is being due. Your faith will draw from God when nothing else works." I mean, it'll absolutely draw from God when. No there, there's people think if I can just to. yeah it, 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 there, it, it, I've seen people thought well if I can just get to that meeting down the road that evangelist I know he prays for the sick mm -hmm. listen go to that meeting but look to God not the evangelist right, amen right. Yeah. and if you get there and nothing happens you know what God's word still works yes amen. oh yes. man I tell you mm. it, 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 if we want to help people we've got to make some emphasis, place some emphasis on the subject of the individual's faith. Yes. Yes. Uh, hold, hold your place. We're going to look at Mark chapter 6 just a moment. Is that okay? Yes. We're going to come back over here because he didn't just say that one. Well, and let me go ahead and just read it here. He said, Whatsoever you shall demand is being due, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall demand anything that is due in my name, I will do it. I mean, you can't get any more certain than that. That's what Jesus is saying. And again, that word ask, it doesn't mean to petition yeah. as if you're begging for something that's never been given. It means that you are taking advantage of what God has already set to your account by exercising your faith and using the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Where did, where did I tell you we were going to go next? Did I tell you? you? said Mark 6. Mark 6. Go over there with me real quick if you would. Mark chapter 6. <clears throat> mm. Tell you the word of God is so good it will never fail. Thank Amen. You, Lord Jesus. I, I remember going to a meeting here and a very well known event. Somebody I love. I mean, he's gone on to glory now. 
uh, some tremendous miracles, tremendous testimonies in this. I mean, people raised from the dead yeah. in this guy's ministry. <laughs> I say that like it's acceptable. We've seen the folks raised from the dead. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> We've seen it a number of times. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> well, my church, we don't see that. At my, well, maybe you're in the wrong church. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> You, you need to check. You know how you can tell if you're in the right church or the wrong church? Are they teaching the Word of God? Right. They, do they act like God is alive? Is yeah. is He present tense, a help, <laughs> a present help? A help amen, in a time of need? Amen. Or is He a has been and a, a washed, done, up, has washed been. up has been? <laughs> is He the same? See, if the God your church is teaching isn't the same as the one in the Bible, amen. Right. Amen. Then there's a problem, folks. Yes. You know, Jesus, well, through through Paul warned Timothy that uh, in the last days there would come a, a certain a, a rebellious people. He describes them. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the key indicators was they would deny the power of God, the dunamis of God. Yeah. Right. They'd say, that's not for today. Sound familiar? Mm. <laughs> Sound like a church I used to go to. Mm -hmm. I quit going to that church. Listen. <laughs> we've had folks over the years and I'm so glad you're with us maybe you've never heard this before and so no condemnation <laughs> in, intended here but we've had folks over the years that they knew where to get a miracle they mm -hmm. knew what church to go to if they needed prayer for a miracle mm -hmm. and they'd come see us but then they'd spend the rest of their time going to their church that was fancy and had a steeple where God could find them you know, some people act like God can't find you unless you got a, a steeple, and the higher the steeple, the more spiritual the church. And, and uh, in other words, there are some people that are more interested in the outward furnishings and trappings mm. of religion than they are in a heart of faith. Mm. And and, uh, and you know, you could do very little for people. I saw people receive a miracle, but as soon as they received at our church and went back to their old dead church, they got talked out of it. Yes. Often, you know, Jesus, often, remember same. Jesus brought the blind same. man out of Bethsaida. Wasn't it Bethsaida or Chorazin? He, he brought him out and prayed for him. He laid hands on him once and he said, uh, I see men as trees. Mm -hmm. You know, why didn't he just instantly receive perfect healing? I believe one reason is because Jesus was having to get him out from under the influence of that community of unbelief and rebellion. Yes, sir. And yeah. so it, it took a little bit more of an effort to get him free. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, time and again, Jesus would tell people not, he'd tell them not to go back. Or in some cases, he did tell them to go back and tell mm -hmm. other folks. Mm -hmm. But you got to be careful who you hang out with. You need to find people, like Peter said, of like precious faith. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you hang around a bunch of people that don't believe in miracles, don't be surprised if you don't get any miracles either. Right, right. right. Well, over here in, uh, I had you go to Mark 6. Look down with me if you would. And let's pick up in uh, verse 1. It says, speaking of Jesus, he went out from thence, came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? Sounds like a pretty good start in a way. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So think about this a moment. They knew his testimony they knew his reputation for the miracles that had already been wrought through his ministry but then they started to kind of bring him down a notch is not this a carpenter the son of mary the brother of james and of joseph and of judah and simon and what were they saying he's just a man like us well, he was a man, but he wasn't just a man. He was a perfect man, a sinless man. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. And, and it says down here that they, they said, From whence hath this man these things, and what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Verse uh, 3 says, Is not this a carpenter, the son of Mary? Look on down to verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, they, they were offended. The last part of verse 3 says, They were offended at him. Because <clears throat> who is he to tell us? So I've seen that as a pastor. I've seen times where folks get offended. God God didn't say, Mike, you're so perfect and you're so flawless. I want you to be a pastor. Right. No, he no, never no. said that. I don't He's claim that. Amen. But I do know that the Lord has, has had his hand upon me yes. and has sought to help and bless people through me and through... That'll the, receive it. Yeah, that'll receive it. Mm -hmm. And... and, uh, and 
you know, people would receive, they'd get blessed. People didn't receive, they didn't get blessed. Right. And the same thing was true with Jesus here. And Jesus said in verse 4, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house. And he could there. Notice that word could. Yes. Now, mm. let's suppose you got a bank account and you got a ton of money in it and somebody asked you for $10. You could give them the money, but if you choose not to, maybe you wouldn't give it to them, right? Right. When you talk about what somebody would or wouldn't do, you're talking within the realm of their abilities. Yes. When you start talking about what somebody could or couldn't do, you're talking about the limitations, limitations of their abilities. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks think, well, Jesus was here. He was God come in the flesh. And that he was, but God come in the flesh had become a man. And he was subject to the will of God and he was subject to the the uh, Spirit of God and the leading of the Spirit of God. Yes. And so it says down here <clears throat> that Jesus could there do no mighty work. He could there do no mighty work. Mm -hmm. Now why couldn't he do it? We, we know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Right. Miracle working power. It, it, you know the word dynamis comes well the word dynamite comes from the Greek word dynamis that is translated power mm -hmm. that same word was translated virtue with the woman with the issue of blood yeah. and it's an explosive power in other words it's got incredible uh, you might would almost say limitless capacity yes to do good but it can be limited <laughs> yes yeah because Jesus was anointed with that power <clears throat> but we're told here that despite that anointing upon him he could not do any mighty works there it, now this is interesting think about this it's really talking about the 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 manifestations of the gifts of the holy spirit in operation through jesus they were prevented yes. if jesus was in a place where he could not give give expression to the holy spirit effectively why should we think that, that men won't encounter similar places? That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's but what is it that prevented him? Now, now think about this. Go back to, if you would, go back to Genesis 1 real quick. We're going to hold your place in Mark 6. Mm -hmm. But go back to Genesis 1. <clears throat> in Genesis 1, I wish I had, I, I don't have access to all my Bibles. <laughs> Somebody's probably praying for me. <laughs> There's a, a Bible out, and really the group itself is in in a bit of error. Uh, but they've got a literal translation of the Bible, yeah. and it's incredible. It's called the Concordant Translation. Yeah. You know, and the funny thing about most of these different groups like that that are off into a little bit of error is that you can use their own Bible to... I know you can do that with Jehovah's Witnesses. They they deny the bodily resurrection of Jesus, but their own Bible, the New World Translation, uh, spells it right out. Yes. <laughs> well, the 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 um, Concordant Translation in Genesis one reads a little bit differently than what we're going to see here. It says in uh, verse one, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Concordant says in a beginning. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. And it goes on to say in verse 2 in the King James, it says, And the earth was without form and void. Well, the, the literal translation says the earth became that way. Yes. Isaiah, what is it? Isaiah 45, I believe about verse 18, says that he didn't create the earth in vain or, or void, but to be inhabited. Amen. <clears throat> yes. You know, you know, the earth as we're living in it wasn't a matter of God's effort and trial and error. He wasn't experimenting. I mean, he he everything he does, he does in perfection. I mean, he he scored himself over. In Gen when you read through Genesis, it, it talks about what he created and said, and it was good. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Well, it was good because it was God doing the work. He doesn't do anything halfway, and he doesn't do anything defective, including you. If you've been born again, that's right. You know, you're not inferior to anybody else. Don't believe those lies of the devil. He's trying to equate you to your past or even to maybe some present failure. But you're bigger than that because God on the inside of you is bigger than that. And, and having said that, look on down here. He says, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Really what I believe this is talking about was a time subsequent to Satan's fall. Yes. If you read, what is it, uh, Ezekiel 28, um, 
uh, Isaiah 14 it, it talks a little bit about those events and it talks about uh, even in, in Luke chapter 10 about Satan being cast down to the earth right well, when was he cast down? When he rebelled against God, him and a third of the angels. Right. And God cast him down like lightning. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, in a heartbeat, he was gone, gone. folks. <laughs> and and, and uh, so I believe that's what it's talking about here. It's talking about the cata cataclysmic uh, yeah. condition and event that was a consequence of Lucifer's fall and the entrance of sin into the creation that existed at that time. Yeah. You know, when you, there's so much here, and we don't have time to get into it all. But but uh, when it says the earth was without form and void, it's talking about subsequent to that judgment, I believe. Yes. And, and so, any way you look at it, the creation as we know it was was had become it was in flux, it was in ruins, and and yet God was still involved. Right. Mm. Amen. I mean, my my thought is with the the description that's given the situation could not have been any worse in the natural yeah more, more <laughs> sound like life there's a lot of folks right now that that's life for them yes. it just doesn't yeah. seem like it could be any worse in the natural yes. but god doesn't give up so don't you give up Thank you, mm. look down here it, it says Darkness was upon the upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's real vague. That that word moved is it, it's the same word. If if you were to say that hen's brooding over there, mm -hmm. what's what's happening when a hen's brooding? We had broody hens. They would yes. fight you for the eggs they're sitting on. They will. I mean, you if if you weren't careful, you'd come back with a hole pecked in your hand just for right. taking the eggs. Right. That, you know, you're buying them the feed. The least they can do is give you an egg. But when a hen's broody, she doesn't want to give it up. No. She'll fight you for it. Right. Why? Because to her, that represents her life. Yes. Amen. There's life in that egg. Yes. And here in this condition of utter run was the Holy Ghost. How many of you remember in your life when you received Jesus? Yes. Now, not everybody. Not every, some folks had better sense than the rest of us. But, but all too often what we hear of a testimony of those who have received Christ, particularly later in life, was they had come to the end of themselves. Yes. <laughs> there was no further hope. I know that was true of me. I, remember, I couldn't even kill myself right. Yes, sir. You know? And, and, and I can remember saying, Lord, I need your help. And I started crying out to God. Now, I had been born again as a child, but I was backslidden. Didn't even understand what that meant. <coughs> I was backslidden because the religion I'd been brought up in really basically promoted the concept that God was aloof and uncaring until you left this life and eventually went to heaven. And you better hope you make it. And, you know, there was a lot of self-effort and merit, yeah. personal merit that was tied into that through religion. And uh, <laughs> what a what a terrible terrible perspective. Yes, sir. And yes. so, uh, you know, I thought God was for Sunday school and death. Ooh. You know, because you you, you re I received Him in Sunday school, and it was almost like see you again when I die. Yes, sir. That kind of a mentality. And there's a lot of people that that's really it today. They don't have a personal relationship with a living Savior. Yeah. They need to know God. Amen. Yeah. And, and they need to understand that they are so precious to God. Imagine the investment that he made. We just sang the, the song, um, what, the, our last hymn, the hymn we sang. How great thou art. <laughs> when I consider the, thy son not sparing, I scarce can take it in. Yes. I mean, that takes my breath away to this yes. day. Yes. That he would make that kind of sacrifice for me. But he did it because he sees something in you that you're yet to discover. You're that precious to God that he would give his best to ransom you. And, and uh, mm. explain that. I can't. Mm. It, it's just the fact that he is love. He, he doesn't just love. Love is the very essence of everything he is. Yes. And so it, it tells us over here that in this worst case scenario, judgment has transpired and, and, and the end result is the absolute ruin of creation and yet here the Holy Ghost doesn't have enough sense to pack it up and leave mm. Mm. 
you know this this brings a little bit more light into jesus being a very present help in your time of trouble yes just because things are so bad you'd like to escape doesn't mean that he's abandoned you and in this situation in this situation in the midst of utter chaos the golly i just cannot fathom what it must have been like the holy spirit is brooding yes what, what does that mean it means <laughs> Over all the evidence to the contrary that anything worthwhile could even be, the Holy Spirit is anticipating something. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Mm -hmm. It's like he knew something. Mm -hmm. He knew something. You know what he knew? He knew that, that, that all that needed to happen was for God to speak. Yes. Because God's a God of faith. Do you, do you want to see why the devil hates the, the message of the word of faith? Because he has no defense against it. That's great news. No power. <laughs> he can't resist it. He can't stop it. Thank you. And he sees his best efforts undone in an instant when somebody will stand up and start speaking God's word. Yes. And, yes. and so here's the Holy Ghost. Everything's in ruins, but he ain't letting go. Mm -mm. God hadn't left mm. you. There's somebody out there right now, you just feel like, you know, you, you, you don't think God's in Bermuda, you think he went to Europe. You know, he's just he's just gone. He's not. That's a lie of the devil. Don't listen to your circumstances. Look at the word of God. That's right. Faith takes God at his word. You need to start telling yourself, God, I, I may not see you, I may not feel you, but I believe you're here because you said you'd never leave me, you'd never forsake me. That's right. I don't care if you're dealing with a life or death situation. I don't care if the devil has afflicted you with cancer. I'm declaring that cancer to be cursed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. God's got yes. better for you. Don't yes. quit. Amen. There's no use, no use, no need to quit when you're winning. That's right. And he always causes us to try. That's right. But but the only thing that can stop him is our lack of cooperation. Right. Yes. See, right. that's what happened back in Jesus' hometown. The people wanted to get nitpicky and start talking when they should have been listening. See, if you'll listen to God, if you'll listen to his word, faith will come. Right. Yes. Quit talking about how hard it is to believe. No, it's not. You believe what you're listening to. Trouble is you're not listening as much to the Word of God as what you need to. Yeah. And yeah. the devil will give you all kinds of other That's alternatives. True. Amen. Yes. yes. You're not going to get from, from I love Lucy what you need from God loves you. <laughs> well, <laughs> so here the Holy Ghost is. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. And look at verse 3. And God said. Yes. Now, it, it's so flowery in the King James. Let there be light and there was light. Really, literally, in the most most... Um, authentic sense God stood in the vacuum of space and time and over the the ruins of creation under judgment and he said light be yes. I don't think he even hollered it, oh. it and, and yet do you know to, the, to this day the universe they say is expanding at the speed of light still still, still to this day <laughs> why because God said light be yes the light hadn't stopped yet it hadn't stopped yet <laughs> what happened See, the Holy Spirit's the power of God. Yes. But the power of God is confined to faith in His Word. Mm -hmm. look, look back over real quick, look if, if you would. See, what, what would happen to your life that's in ruins right now if you quit saying anything that came to mind and just started yeah. committing to speak the Word of God? Amen. Start yeah. telling yourself what you can do. Quit asking yourself. <clears throat> start telling yourself... I can do all things through Christ yes. who strengthens me. Yes. yes. Amen. The greater Amen. one is in me. Yeah. Glory to God. When it's the worst and you've seen the devil's best, understand this. God's defeated him time and again. Yes. Right. There's record after record after record of God triumphing over the devil already. already. Yeah. And, and he's the same and he's in you. Glory well, back up very quickly. Mark chapter 6. <clears throat> I'm sorry, get my throat cleared here a little bit. Mark chapter six. It said down there that uh, oh, let's see, verse five. He could there do no mighty work, say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Mm. So that community put the brakes on God. Wow. God was trying to move through His Son. Jesus said, "If you know whatever you." seen me do it's the father in me that doeth the words yes whatever you hear me speak the father gave me the words 
and so God himself could not move on behalf of these people and, and yet Jesus was there for that very purpose yes. why couldn't he do it because they wouldn't cooperate that's why we're teaching the word of God to people yes. because we want folks to understand how easy it is to align yourself with God mm -hmm. and quit fighting against him Yes. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with, with repenting, discovering you're wrong and repenting. Right. It's when we maintain our course a, along a wrong direction that we really are setting ourselves for ruin. Yeah. And, and so here Jesus is that said he could there do no mighty work, say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. The, the literal translations basically say that a few folks that were sick with minor ailments, he yeah. laid hands on them and he healed them. And look at verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Mm, yes. Now their unbelief in this case, there's two types of unbelief. There's unbelief due to ignorance. How shall they know except they hear? And how shall they hear except someone preach? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's, there's, you know, you can't believe what you don't know. Don't, don't get down on yourself because you don't believe some of these things I've been teaching yet. As you listen to the word of God, faith will come to you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory yes. to God. Uh, God's word will generate that faith but it says that they he marveled because of their unbelief their unbelief was disobedience yes. they refused to do what they had heard the word teach mm -hmm. essentially and, and so it's, look what he did he, he went around the villages teaching because even in the face of their unbelief the only hope they had was to eventually open up to and receive the ministry of God's word being taught Yes. When they quit listening, they forfeited the supernatural. Don't quit listening. Don't quit listening. Amen. Amen. And, and now look at what happened here. It, it says, <clears throat> He went about around the villages teaching, and he called unto them twelve, the twelve, and he began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. So he went out and began to. Notice this. Even if you go to that meeting where that evangelist is that you pinned your hopes on. <laughs> and you don't receive it doesn't mean that God has gone out of business mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it all ended with the last apostle he hasn't come yet mm. amen mm. Amen. <laughs> glory to God I mean if you don't if you think all the prophets and apostles have come and gone well what about the two witnesses in Revelation <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> amen yes. oh Lord I got a hush I'm, I'm, I've gone too long already uh, but I'm telling you, God is doing something in your lives. I believe even as we're ministering the Word of God, that, that healing is present through the Word that we're teaching. Uh, over in Psalms 107, 20, it says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their afflictions. Yes. I've had testimonies over the years of people that were sitting under the ministry of God's Word as it was being taught. And this is not because I'm special. It's because the, the Word of God generates faith and it imparts God's very life. It's life to those who find it. Medicine to all their flesh. We had a lady that was blind from cataracts due to medication she'd been taking. Right. And her eyes, the cataracts just melted in the middle of the teaching. Yes. And, and uh, don't limit God. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Glory to God. Uh, just thank God that he that began a good work in you will complete it under the day of Christ. Amen. Uh, and don't go by what you feel. Amen. It's real important that we not go. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about what you're sharing. Whenever you go out, if you've ever, if we've ever planted a garden, if we've ever put flower seeds in the ground, vegetable seeds in the ground, whatever, you go out and you plant them, and you don't see anything until they germinate. You don't see anything until they sprout. And I remember that sweet testimony of the woman who, who took her daughter up for prayer that had, had, had her daughter had polio that had messed up one of her legs. Yeah. Remember that was bent the wrong way and wouldn't work right. And this woman took her up for prayer and he uh, laid hands on her and prayed, but in the natural, nothing changed. Well, and it was funny. We're talking about Dad Hagen praying yeah. for this mama and praying for her daughter. And, and they were in a service. I can't remember if it was full gospel businessmen or just a faith crusade. They were in a service where a lot of notable, dynamic miracles had happened right mm -hmm. there in that service. Yes, yes. And, and, and Dad Hagen, when he prayed for this woman, it, nothing appeared to change. Right. Nothing looked any different to the mom. Nothing felt any different to the mom. Yeah. But Dad Hagen assured her, he said, I want to tell you, he said, you've seen the miracles that transpired here tonight. You've seen the others that I prayed for that, that received their healing. He said, I want you to understand, when I laid hands on your daughter and I prayed for her, 
there was a greater anointing that went into her physical body than, than what ever manifested with any of these other folks that received mm -hmm. all these incredible obvious tangible miracles but they didn't feel it in the natural they didn't feel it in the natural mm -hmm. go ahead and finish because she no 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 she, that's well she took her daughter mm -hmm. home and, and she dad hagan told her what to say to, he said speak the word over your daughter keep yes. speaking the word over your yes. daughter yes and the the mama was like anybody else she she got didn't discouraged. She, she got discouraged her mm -hmm. child was suffering and and she felt helpless and hopeless and and she said that she took her little girl and and she was weeping as she placed her in the bathtub and she was bathing washing her little daughter leg. washing her leg and she started weeping and, and uh crying out to god and she and she said well i thought you know she was she was putting beginning to give place to that unbelief yes. by speaking it yes speak the word only yes, Je yes that's what yes, the centurion yes. told jesus and yes. that's i believe what jesus would have us learn yes just speak the word she began saying it and she stopped and she said no lord i i, I repent yes. i believe is how that went yeah she said i repent and, and she said all of a sudden she started hearing things she heard and crackling and popping like the like the like limb rice of a tree. krispies on a bigger scale <laughs> like the limb of a tree crackling and popping if it were being twisted and looked down and that little girl's leg was perfect and as whole as the other one so it's important that we not go by what we hold see hold fast the confession why would he it's tell you to hold fast we, the confession of your faith and don't if go you weren't going to be challenged to let it loose yes 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 absolutely Amen. Don't go by what we see. Don't go by what you see. Wherever we're standing, if you're believing God to get through and minister to loved ones, do you know what? The same Holy Spirit that was broody over the face of the deep, waiting for the Word of God to be ministered, that same Holy Spirit is just waiting. Amen. The angels of heaven are just waiting for the Word to be spoken, for us to give that Word, speak that Word, because we've been given authority. We've been, His authority has been endowed within us and given to us as his children that's why we've got to share the good news people need to know you have the authority of heaven back in you yes. come to the father receive jesus as your lord and savior and you can speak to the mountain and they will be uprooted removed and cast into the sea we need a miracle working god in this day Amen. this is why it's so important one. that we are that we're where we're being taught the word he needs a faith talking people yes he needs a faith talking Amen. people but we've got to be it's imperative we need a miracle working god in this day in time you know the, the the times are evil the days are evil but guess what greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world Amen. he's given us all that we need to put us over to put us over to the other side there may be times that it can feel disheartening it can feel discouraging but our god is faithful his word is at work his word just like that seed that we place in the ground i can remember at the end of we're in the long cabin the church cabin and at the end of the house, I planted uh, sunflower seeds. I think there were mammoth sunflower seeds. I had no idea what I had planted. I didn't know that those suckers will get like 10, 12 feet tall. No lie. They are towering. They get very, very tall. But anyway, I planted these mammoth uh, sunflower seeds at the end of the house and those suckers I, I would go out and i would check and i would see nothing i'd go out the next day i'd check because a farmer i mean even i don't know about y'all but when i've had a garden i'm about like a five-year-old i'll go out now i won't dig it up but i'll go out and i'll check one day i'll check the next day i'll check the next day i'll check the next day because i'm looking for those sprouts to come up and just because just because we don't see or feel anything does not mean that something's not going on that that seed isn't germinating that the life the innate life that was placed in that seed to grow when it's put in the ground and when it has water and when it's properly fed and comes through the earth and starts getting sunshine he's placed that on the inside of us he's already placed on the inside of us everything we need if we would simply speak his word to those situations to their circumstances and listen we got to talk to our own mind we got to talk to our own emotions <laughs> yes. just like that woman did when she was praying for for her daughter and started was bathing her before she was putting her to bed and was washing that little little bent up deformed messed up leg from polio just like she had to stop herself 
She was getting discouraged. God understands that, but we got to stop it. We got to stop it. We got to let his spirit rise up on the inside of us and shift our focus because he's there. He's helping us if we will be sensitive to hear his voice and to shift to what he is saying, shift our focus back to his word and begin declaring his word. There are times that we have spoken the word in the most dire of natural circumstances. Amen. There are times we have literally laughed the in laugh the of faith, yeah. of faith yeah. in the face of absolute death. And we saw it turn around. We saw it turn around because several things. We had authority in those situations. Our authority had been received in those situations so that we had the right to exert our, the authority God gave us to set ourselves in agreement with those who were there. You know, there, there are things we need to understand. There are very important aspects, but it's not difficult. That's why we need to come together with others of like precious faith, because the Lord is endeavoring to do a new thing. I know we've heard this, but he is endeavoring to do something. I think it's hilarious. The devil always overplays his hand. Yes. Do you remember whenever the devil went and, and broke the hearts of so many when that spirit of death went through and, and killed the firstborn? Yes. And remember, it wasn't just just humans. It was, the, it was the animals too, the livestock, the firstborn of the livestock of all things. What an ugly, evil spirit spirit of death. Amen. But those who who place their faith in God and they plant they painted on their doorpost the from the blood the, yeah. that represented the blood of the Most High, the blood of Jesus, the blood that Jesus would shed when he went on the cross. That's what's so important. That's why we talk about the cross. That's why we remember the cross because it was with his own blood that we were given a testament a living will. This Bible is our living will that was given to us and it was signed, sealed, and delivered in the precious blood of Jesus. Precious. He did it for you. He did it for me. He's not mad at anybody. You know, we're, we're coming to the conclusion I need to go ahead. We need to close. But but people need to know that Jesus loves us. He cares yes. about us. I think about the story from the Bible of the prodigal son. And there's one aspect of that story. The son took his inheritance, spent it. Remember, he was out feeding pigs. He had spent all he had. He was broken. Things didn't look good in the natural, but oh my, there was a daddy somewhere praying for him. There was a daddy Amen. believing God Amen. for him. There was a daddy thanking God that the greater one was rising up on the inside of his son no matter what it looked like, Amen. even though he hadn't heard from him for many, 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 many days. Don't give up. Don't give up. Those who seem to to be broken or those who seem to have gone to the right hand or to the left off track, they're closer than we know. They're closer than we know to seeing what they need to see, Amen. To, to having an encounter in a relationship with the Most High. And, and what's so precious about that story is, is the son, whenever he started coming, the father saw him far off, far off. And I just think it's amazing. He knew who it was in a distance. He saw him a great way off. And I'm thinking, I don't Daddy know why. Was waiting on him. I've always pictured that there was just a dust cloud, you know, that came up <laughs> down the dark road a ways off. But that father knew who it was. And that father ran to meet him. And we need to understand one of the reasons that father ran to meet that prodigal son was because that prodigal son, the way he had acted and the way that he treated his own father was worthy of being stoned to death if he ever well, returned yeah. there again. The daddy ran out there because had the villagers, the, the surrounding neighbors, had they seen that son, they very likely would have stoned. Yes. They, they, you know, the mentality was they had the right and they had the responsibility to do that in order to spare that father any yes. further heartbreak or yes. heartache. Yes. And, and that son had written his daddy out. He said, Daddy, you might as, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. The way that son getting and asking for his inheritance, he was treating his father like, you are dead to me. Well, I'm and a lot of people have treated the Lord God like he's dead to them, yes. but... But, but you you're not what? dead to him. No, no. And that father ran out there, ran out there so that he could intervene and so he could is. hold up his hand so he could stop anyone who would dare raise a stone to begin stoning his son to death who deserved it, who deserved it by everything he'd done and said. It doesn't matter what you've done and said. It doesn't matter how much you've strayed from God. It doesn't matter how you've run your mouth. Quit running your mouth against the Most High. Stop today. Recognize 
recognize that he loves you and that you're speaking when you speak ill or when you rebuff the the reaching and the voice of God you're rebuffing someone who loves you more yes. than you've ever been loved in your life by any human being anywhere and here's the cool part they love you regardless of how Amen. ugly you've been they love us he loves us regardless of how hateful we've been to him how much we've rejected him his love passes right over that because he sees what he's placed on the inside of you and on the inside of me and he just needs that connection that relationship for us to say oh my lord why would i not receive jesus as my lord and savior and the moment we do that there is just like an explosion of the life of god that takes place on the inside of us let's pray for people amen amen the word of god tells us that god so loved you God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would receive him would not perish but have everlasting life. Pray this prayer with me to receive Jesus if you've never done it. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is what will you do today with this Jesus? Say this prayer with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Father God, I thank you that you thank gave you, Jesus for, for me. Jesus for me. Father, I open my heart now to receive <sighs> Jesus. Jesus. He's mine. I receive the gift of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you are my Father. I thank you that you took care and defeated death, hell, and the grave for me. Father, I thank you. You're my Lord now. I give glory to you. I'm yours and you are mine. I thank you, Father, that we're going on a journey to beat all journeys, that your glory will be manifest in my world, in my little world, in, in my place, in my location, in the relationships around me, that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. We are so honored to be able to share God's word with you. It is life to us as we find it. It's medicine to all of our flesh. And uh, we're just so thankful for the opportunity to share such an incredible, it's the good news. It is. Amen. Yes. We were all racing to our own ruin and God met us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, we will see you next week. Uh, God bless each of you that have responded. I haven't responded to everybody yet online. Uh, but we've had a number of you watching, and we're just honored beyond words. God bless you. We will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>